I have a game to show you and then uh, we'll do some more studies okay this game I'm playing with the white pieces and my opponent is about uh, 2350 ready player and uh, it's a very good positional game where you see the control of the center and space is very very important in chess so d4 knight f uh, d4 d6 knight f3 knight f6 c4 g6 knight c3 bishop g7 e4 and now what is the name of this opening this is one of the most popular openings against d4 king's indian defense and i decided to play the classical setup so i got my center pawns i got my knights out so got the control castles bishop e2 e5 knight c6 d4 and this is the called the bayonet attack so black will try to attack usually what black tries to attack on the king side and white has a positional advantage on the queen side so it's sort of a race and there are some really great games played in this opening you know some very nice wins for black some good wins for white as well it's very sharp because uh, you're being under attack so you have to watch out and to make precise moves here with white also so knight h5 now my opponent put the knight there and he's threatening let's first think about it and try to see what is the threat here what what is he trying to do with knight h5 yes he wants to play f5 that's one thing but if let's say you you can make a move again here for s what would you do here what's the purpose of the knight on h5 he can go knight f4 he wants to go knight f4 and win the bishop if he can win one of the bishops here it will be great the bishop, light square or dark square bishop you'll have a great position okay so knight h5 he's trying to go knight f4 so i need to do something against that and the best thing to do it is g3 restricting it when opponent is trying to come in into your territory most of the time you should just make a pawn move to stop the piece from coming in if that particular square has a pawn that is controlling because if you don't do that then he's going to come in and then you'll have a hard time actually pushing this piece away okay so that's why you play g3 to control f5 he is attacking he wants to play f4 and wants to pressure on e4 what is the best move here white to play try to find the best move excellent idea excellent idea knight g5 activating your knight attacking his knight on g5 h5 and have the potential to go to knight on e6 okay knight g5 and putting pressure knight f6 and now he is threatening to play h6 attack my knight and if the knight moves he's going to win my pawn so there is a, there is a danger here of losing the pawn here what should i do here huh? because i don't want to lose the pawn you could but then when we sort of give up the center you know then he takes back and he has a good center see he's got this he's got this he's got this he's got he's got a lot of control in the center okay could go bishop f3 that's a possibility not bad also not bad <laughs> those moves are playable but what is the best what is the best way to protect e4 to make sure you're guarding that permanently 
course. See? Protect it permanently. If you protect with a piece, then that piece can be moved, and then we still have to worry about it. So we want to protect it permanently like this. King h8. Now I had a um, uh, few options. The move in the game was fine, very interesting move. But there was also another alternative here. So you have two good moves here, move in the game or the alternative. Can you find those two playable moves here? What are those two playable moves here? But why, why go away? There is some potential danger here, right? On the king. So don't want to go away. Because then you could, you know, there could be some potential attack. Oftentimes your knight goes here. In these positions when he gets kicked with h6. Oftentimes you have to go here. Okay? This is the idea. Maybe two is a plot, fine move. You could do that. I played b5 in the game. Because I wanted to have more control of the c6 square. So when I go knight e6, he takes, I can just plant my knight on d5 without the problem of c6. But there was another alternative here. I played b5, but I could have also played the move bishop e3. Because I'm not quite, I'm not sure if this does anything because I just go back bishop f2. Then I have a bishop on a good diagonal. Will attack and also will protect my king if there are some potential attacking ideas coming from black. Okay? I probably would have preferred to play bishop e3 if I had the opportunity to play this position again. But if again, moving the game is fine too. b5. Controlling c6. Making it more difficult for him to challenge. Now he goes here. Very interesting move. Na Black goes knight to g8. The idea is to go queen e7 and then play h6. And if I go knight e6, take twice. And I'm down a pawn. Possible, but how's that helping us if he goes queen e7? And then start try to play h6. Excellent. Knight e6. He wants to go queen e7 and then play h6. So I realize that. That's why I go in first. Because now, if he takes and goes here, what is a strong move here? Immediately. Takes, knight c7. Fork. Winning an exchange. And if captured, I will gladly take back with a pawn. And now I have my pawn protected only six here. OK? Perfect. So he takes. He takes only for Fe. I take back. Rook e8. Black is simply trying to win my pawn and then say, OK, where is the compensation for the sacrificed pawn? So I don't like to lose. Uh, I want to point out a very important moment here. If black goes here first, it looks like my pawn is gone here. 
but actually I have a good idea here. What would be the best way to play here for white? If he plays the move rook e8 here, what would be the best way to play it? Very close. Very close. Very close. A little better. Improve that. Your first move was great. But second move, not so good. Because I have e4. Absolutely, queen c2. And now simply attacking the pawn. So I go queen c2 and f5 is under attack. He cannot do anything. Got it? Perfect. So he took, took rook e8. Now pawn is under attack. And if I lose the pawn, then I will still have some compensation, no question about it. But not as much as I like. Absolutely. Why lose it, right? Why lose the pawn if we can protect it? Protect it. Bishop g4. If he if captured, then I want to capture back with the queen. Again, this knight d5 is causing problems because very strong. Take, 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 and here. Attack, attack. Okay. So that's why my opponent played the move c6, which is a good move because protecting the d5 square. So now, no ideas like knight d5. I can't jump in on d5 with a knight. What should I do now? a3? Bishop a? Bishop g5, I have queen b6 check. Problem. How about we keep our light school bishop? What do you think of that idea? He had a chance. He had an opportunity to take it. But he didn't. So maybe it makes sense now to try to protect this bishop. So we have the advantage of pair of the bishops. Absolutely. And now the question is, what is this knight doing here? See, the idea was to take and jump in back with the other knight. But now, black cannot do that anymore. And if I had one more move, just one more move to put my bishop here, this would have been strategically winning already for me. Strategically. Because I would stop this queen b6 attack. But my opponent, opponent was counting on it. So, queen b6 check played. And now, we've got some options here. We have two retreats with the king. We can block it with the rook. Not an easy idea here. Let's see. When you have a choice, it's easy to go wrong. When you have a choice. Yes? It's possible. I don't think moving the king is bad, but I had another idea in mind. You could move, the, which square you prefer to move, g2 or h1? Good question. <laughs> yeah. Bishop? Yeah. <laughs> See, this is the that's why I'm showing you this game. For decisions like this, because 
real life game decision needed. It seems so simple, but still, it's just King H1 looks good. Some King G King G2 is fine. But what else? What else can you do here? That's what I played. Because I anticipate in some point I would need to double up the rooks. And I don't see immediately what he can do to take advantage of the pin. It's it, it's unusual move. But it's a very concrete move based on a concrete calculation. I'm not making this move because it just looks good. It's concrete calculation. Because I knew my opponent will play queen d4. And looks looks like some trouble here. My pawns are hanging. My knight is loose. I cannot exchange queens because my pawns will fall. What to do? Looks like maybe I did something wrong here. Bishop? Excellent. Excellent job, Bishop B2. Developing a piece. Always remember, if it gets complicated, development comes first. Developing piece, strengthening everything. But the c4 pawn is hanging. See, that's the thing. My opponent didn't take the pawn on c4 in the fear of losing the pawn on d6. Okay? This was the problem. My opponent was fearing to lose the pawn on d6, so I decided to play the move rook a d1. But now, I am no longer planning to give my c4 pawn. So he. Uh, if capture on c4, I had queen d6. White is better. But now, what to do now? How to consolidate the position and push the enemy piece back? Because the queen is very active on d4. So now, consolidation needed. Excellent. Bishop h6, what is the threat? Bishop e3, trying to come in and take advantage of that pin. What do you do? Of course, rook d1. Rook is sitting here on the side of the board. Ah, actually, no, maybe not. Oh, I just remember, sorry. If you play rook d1, you are allowing queen e3 idea. And black is remaining somewhat still active. Okay? So that's why I didn't want to allow him to come in here. I played the move rook e1. And now I'm threatening some discovery attacks on the queen. So the queen is not very comfortable anymore on d4. Somehow came in, but now time to go back. Because otherwise, discovery attacks will be very, very strong. So my opponent went back. Now. What to do here? Absolutely. King g2, prophylactic move. You go away from the pin, and now you protect many things. And you can also double up your rooks later. Bishop g7. Now, what do we do next? D1. The target is D6. Let's put pressure on the target. Okay? Let's put pressure on the target. I could play Rook F1 also, but I can't do anything anyway. This knight on G8 is protecting it. So I thought maybe I should just try to put pressure on that pawn. H5 now played. Now, the next idea is very interesting. You're going to like the final position of this game when my opponent resigned. And you'll be like, Really? Bishop a3. How about c1? Look at that excellent square that this bishop going to. Permanently, it will be very strong there. 
cannot be removed. And I can also do some bishop e3 moves if I want. Bishop a3 was okay, but he would just go queen c7. Bishop is better on g5. King h7. My opponent is trying to play bishop h6 in some point to exchange and then take back with the king. Now, what do you do? Bishop g5. Bishop g5. Pin it. Continue. Keep going. Now, rook d3. Idea behind this move is I would like to bring my rook here and have the opportunity to go triple up. You see it? A lot of players, I think, would play this move. And then suddenly there is no way to put more pressure because you got the maximum here. Two rooks and a bishop. So you have to try to look for some different ideas sometimes. So the move rook d3 is very strong. Because I would like to put a rook on f3, two rooks on that file, and queen goes back on f1. That's triple up. Opponent cannot do anything now. So a6 was played. Trying to create some distractions. What do we do? Continue with the plan. When you choose a plan, you stick with it. You don't need to get distracted. You go there, now you're ready to take on f6. And expose the position. And Rook will enter the seventh rank. He needs to protect. He needs to react somehow. Now, one more strong move needed. Almost. I did something else, just to make sure I shut down all the counterplay. I want to shut down all the counterplay here, make sure he's not going anywhere there on that queen side. A4. 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 That's a possibility. No, I really want to play queen f1, but I just didn't want to calculate this captures here. Excellent. That's the move. He can take, because now you have another pawn push. Is that a fork? And drops the knight. End the game. See, two deflections. One the queen, one the knight. And then pick up the loose piece here on f6. So he goes queen e7, and now Big trouble. It's a Zook Zavang. Black is like in, in Zook Zavang. Cannot do anything. Cannot move anything now. What's the next move? To put him into that Zook Zavang. Because black wants to escape now. If you're not paying attention, you know, he'll do that. Queen F1. Now, what can my opponent do here? Cannot move the queen, bishop, knight, rook on F8. <laughs> Only TK move is this. So that's why I played here. <laughs> I really enjoy this game because that's why I'm showing you. Because complete domination here. Where you see the one white pieces are dominating, completely dominating the black. Game ended very quickly here. My opponent just resigned. I think maybe the next move here is resign. <laughs> okay, I can I can do some a4, but then he plays a5. I can just do back and forth, but okay, I need a plan here. And I need you to spend some time here and find that plan. Find the winning plan here.
What is the winning plan here? Takes? Pawn takes? It's a hard move, next one. It's a hard move to find. He can do it. Hmm. It depends the way you look at it, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, you have him really boxed in here. You cannot get more boxed in than this. It's hard to imagine you get a position where black has all the pieces on the board but cannot move anything. This is get, doesn't get more suksavangi than this. King H1, but the, okay, what's the pl plan? Let's see. Huh? A King H8, he goes. Well, he. he, he, he. 91, 93, it's an idea, yeah, but then you gotta watch out for some D5 in some point there, you know, because you lose the control. I like to still keep the control because he can maybe just uh, break through, you know, unleash a breakthrough, you know. Huh? Excellent. <laughs> All you need to do here is expose the position of opponent's king here. And g4 will do the task. Because queen, knight cannot take because of the pin. And if pawn takes, that was the last move of this game. Actually, believe it or not, it came a little surprise to me too when my opponent stopped the clock and resigned. But we will see now why, because there's absolutely no chance here, no counterplay. If you take, white just takes, and you make just a move, and what is the winning idea? Don't rush. Check. Check. Game over. We deflect the defender. So that's one way to win if it takes. So cannot take back with the knight. And also, allowing me to take will be bad because then my bishop comes in. Check. Bishop g6 and ch very bad. So h4 is the only idea. To at least keep it closed. But now I win also. How? Bishop takes pawn, absolutely. Okay, he has to take this pawn here because what else to do? So takes the pawn. G5. But here you don't want to rush. You could play G5 right away also, but I think there is something a little better. Because then my bishop is sort of trapped on H4. I don't think my bishop will be too useful when I play g5. Bishop f6 first, bravo. Takes. Now g5. If the queen moves, we just take the knight. So has to go knight g4. What do you do? Take what? <laughs> the rook, not the knight. Queen g4 check. If he takes, you just go queen to f8, and winning material. If he goes check, what do you
Do you do now? G3? Ay, ay, ay. Check. Anyway, but not G3. King G1. Takes. Up a whole piece. Okay. <laughs> Even in winning positions, you cannot relax. As soon as you relax, then you will miss something. OK? So that, that was my idea, to take on h4. And now I take on f6 and get this with g5. Same thing will happen if opponent takes with the rook. I can take. And you go g5. Now it goes on g4. And what is the neat move here to win that piece? Maybe a few ways to do it, but yeah, absolutely. You go queen e two, and after you go queen e two, you're putting pressure on g four, and black is losing the piece. Okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's a bit strange that my opponent resigned after G G4, but as you can see here, it's a complete suksavang here. None of the pieces cannot move. G4 was th that final touch here, that when you have a position like this where you have complete control, that opponent just, just going back and forth, like here, just going back and forth here, you just need to find the, the last idea to break through. And that idea was G4 and black resigned here. Okay. OK, excellent. Now, at the end, we will be doing a study, a difficult study. White to play and win. If you want, you can write down this position, because it's a very unique position. There are only a few pieces on the board. And you can save this. White to play and win. Uh, let me just show you the problem here, because you may think, wait a minute, why is this a problem? But the problem is, we have all these extra pieces, but he has got two threats, promote and take. And if we somehow can win this pawn or you know, sacrifice any piece for it, we'll win. But we can't. That's why now we have to bring extraordinary measures here to win. That's the only way to win it. Well, let's try to find the idea, not just move by move. Check, he goes away. So if you move the knight, he quins, yeah? If you move the bishop, he wins, quins. So you have no choice. So as the first move was already suggested, is rook d8 check, yeah? He has to go here. Because if he goes to c1, you just easily win after bishop e2. Take, don't take with the bishop, OK? Don't take with the bishop. It will be a steal mate. Take back with the rook, OK? So I just go check and you just win. OK, so he goes here now. What to do? Pound takes knight, queen. Yeah, but you lose your knight too. See, you lose your knight too on the way. And you only have that with a bishop, so. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> unfortunately, that, wo that won't change the result of the game. Because <laughs> it's impossible to mate with a bishop. You did get rid of the pawn, but unfortunately, the price you paid, you know, just was too much. <laughs> you lost your knight. See, we gave up five and eight. Eight. Uh, for just to get that pawn off. C1 queen check. Wait, what is your move? <laughs> 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 
When you don't know what to do, what do you do? Just check it. <laughs> okay, now, if he takes, he loses. You go check, he steps away, you pick it up. The problem is, if he takes your knight, he actually helps you because it's only one threat now left. And if he goes here, you can just go bishop here and sacrifice. So he goes here. Well, if you keep checking, then we're going to be signing the score sheets. Just agreeing to a draw. King takes d1. Now I take it. Because you no longer have a check from d file. Very tricky. <laughs> bravo, bravo. <laughs> Knight c3. Don't immediately think, oh, he promotes into a queen and we lose. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going a little deeper. But you're not done yet. Check. I can't go here because you have rook c8 check. But I still have this. Still. Task is not accomplished yet. What were you going to do to do that? Two moves. Two moves away from victory. Bishop check, he goes to e1. He escapes, actually. e1, f2, and then he runs. <laughs> With what? Again, don't know what to do, check. He, you know he can go here because you have this check, right? So he has to go here now. You're pinned. So knight cannot move, unfortunately, because it's pinned. Absolutely pinned. What is the threat? Well, yeah, but you need to create immediate threats because my queen starts checking. Your king has no cover. Rook h8, there is no threat. I go queen c6 and stop this queen h1, your threat. Rook f8, yes, sorry I heard something else, rook f8, now threatening to come here, check, and mate, and he cannot go anywhere with the king because all the squares are taken, so now it's mating net here, you go here, and if he goes here, what do you do? No, let's give a check, let's win the queen and still have the rook. It'll be easier to checkmate. Excellent job. Very tough study. Thank you very much for coming and uh, we will see you next time, okay?